Shalom Israel. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweshai, Bashem, Ha, Raka, Kodash. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who taught us the truth. And also want to acknowledge the Akiam who are pushing this truth with sincerity. <clears throat> all right, so I'm just going to let the spirit flow. Uh, I'm going to start out in Romans chapter 1, verse 1. It reads, Paul, a servant of Yahweh Shai, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of Yahweh, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Yahweh Shai, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of Yahweh with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. So I'm actually going to stop right there. And I don't want you to get confused um, when he's talking about all nations. Uh, we're going to have to go to the precept, okay? So, uh, we're going to go at Deuteronomy 4 and 27. <clears throat> it says, And Yahweh shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither Yahweh shall lead you. Okay, so, Israel was scattered among the nations as a curse uh, from Deuteronomy. Uh, for their stubbornness, you know. So, um, <clears throat> whenever you see in the New Testament uh, the word nations, it's it's referring to um, it's referring to the uh, Israelites who are scattered in all the nations. It says we need to read the the Bible precept upon precept as as our Lord commanded us to do so. Okay, and um. Just to back that up a little bit more, I'm going to go to Ezekiel 36 and 9. Let's see what that's it. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 36 and 19. Top of the screen says, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And then, and when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of Yahweh, and are gone forth out of his land. Okay, so, you know, that's another, uh, you know, justification proving that, you know, this is what, when it talks about all the nations. Uh, the people, the, the children of Israel were scattered or dispersed among all countries and among all nations. So you can find Israelites literally in every single nation in the world or in planet Earth. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Isaiah 11 and... We'll go at 12 and 13. And this reads, Isaiah 11 and 12, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Okay, so that's um, Ephraim is northern kingdom, who were um, they? You know they left the customs and the traditions of the Israelites when when the uh, the uh, nation of Israel split up uh, during the reign of Roabam, Solomon's son. So <clears throat> Ephraim is considered northern kingdom Israel. Judah is considered southern kingdom Israel, okay? 
So they, they literally split up. And he says right here on Isaiah eleven twelve, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And so there it is. You know, all of Israel has been scattered among the four corners of the earth, like I've been bringing out in every single nation. And uh, Ephraim and Judah are the two head tribes. Judah's companions, uh, Benjamin and Levi, stuck with Judah. Those three tribes followed the uh, commandments and the uh, customs and the traditions and the laws of, of Yahweh longer than any of the other tribes. So therefore, they were considered, um, well, the northern kingdom, Ephraim, and the other nine tribes, or eight tribes if you count Ephraim, they were considered Gentiles because whenever you don't follow the laws of Yahweh or where you don't you don't call yourself an Israelite and you you know you're you're taking on uh, heathen customs heathen traditions you're looked at as a gentile in Yahweh's eyes okay so nowadays even Judah even Benjamin even Levi are considered gentiles if if Yahweh Shai came back on the earth today and walked the earth like he did before he would look at all of these tribes uh, in America and they would be considered Gentiles in his eyes. Okay? So, yeah, so if you don't follow the laws, you're a Gentile. Okay? Plain and simple. You're a heathen. Gentile is another word for heathen. Okay? So, <clears throat> when we go to the New Testament, the word Gentile is referring to is referring to the uh, to the uh, northern kingdom, the Israelites who who fled and were separated from uh, the tribe of Judah. Okay, and then uh, next thing I'm going to go to really quick, just for edification, is Ezekiel. We'll go back to Ezekiel. We'll go to 36.19. Oh, wait. No, that's not what I wanted. 37 is what I wanted. Ezekiel 37 and 15 through 19. So Ezekiel 37 and 15. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and ride upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and ride upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they should become one in thine hand. And the children of is and the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thee, thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh thy power. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. And they shall be one in mine hand. So the, the, just to break this down, Judah and his companions up in 16 is referring to Benjamin and Levi. And then Joseph and Ephraim is referring to the northern kingdom. And this is prophecy right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is talking about the uh, prophecy of the, uh, the nation of Israel coming back together. And that's what you see on these uh, street corners in America. Okay, when these you see so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native Americans are gathering together, teaching and pushing this real, the real truth, in uh, you know, and they and they have and they're they're joining together, raising up again together, all right. And it says in verse eighteen. Okay, let's know seventeen. Let's deal with seventeen, and join them into another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. 
All right, so when we hold that tribes of Israel chart in the hand, that's what that is. You know, it's becoming one in thine hand. Meaning people, on the, if you go to 18, people will say, what do you mean by this? Who are, what does this mean? Well, what we mean by this is we know who the 12 tribes are Israel of Israel are through the Holy Spirit. They're the people that fit the curses in, in the Deuteronomy, okay? And all you have to do is Google the 12, 12 tribes of Israel, um, you know, and, and you can notice that that's what it is, okay? All of the, uh, all of the tribes are one in, the, in thine hand on the street. So <clears throat> that's, that's that on, on that one. Um, I'm going to go back to Romans chapter 1, where I started. Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to go to 1. And then just scroll down. And it says in, in verse 7... To all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, so really quick, just to prove who the saints are, but he's, a, he's dealing with the saints in Rome, right? The ones who are called to be saints, it said in, in Romans. So um, let me see. We're going to go to... Psalms 148 and 14, the very last verse. So it says, He also exalted, it's at the bottom of the screen, He also exalted the horn of His people and praise of all His saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto Him. Praise ye Yahweh. All right, so there you go. That's who his saints are. So when we go back to Romans, <clears throat> when we go back to Romans, we know that in verse um, 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh, called to be his saints. So who's called to be his saints? We just got that out in Psalms. His saints are Israel, Israelites, men to be more specific, okay? Um, they are the saints and the priests, okay? So actually, let's go to Acts really quick. Because the Israelite man was originally so-called black, so-called Native American, and so-called Hispanic, was originally um, supposed to be the priests of Yahweh. And that's what we are now. We're, com we're, we're coming back into remembrance of who we are and we are literally the priests of Yahweh. How can you be a priest of Yahweh? By pushing this truth on the streets. But first you have to be an Israelite. It's, it's, it's of the nation of Israel. Going to Acts 6 and 7, it says, And the word of Yahweh increased, and the number of, his, of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Okay, so, <clears throat> again, his priests... Are his um, are his Israelite men? If you're an Israelite man, you you're supposed to be a priest, but you know he's taking that away from us until these last days. The ones who wake up are priests again, or prophets, or teachers of the truth, teachers of the word on the street corners. Uh, you know, if you're if you're not preaching, if you're not teaching. You know, you're still not a priest, obviously. You know, and if you starting off, you have to be an Israelite. As we have just brought out in the scriptures. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah 61. And verse 6. And uh, it says. But ye shall be named the priests of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of our, Yaha of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Okay? For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Okay? So, so there you go again. The priests of Yahweh are the men of Israel. 
And it says, hey, if you're out there teaching, preaching, and you're in the part of the hopeful elect, in verse 7, you shall have double for the confusion they shall rejoice in their proportion. Um, so, you know, because being a prophet is not a pretty thing. You know, you, you literally, you separate yourself from the world. And, uh, you know, you separate yourself from all your heathen ways. You, you know, you, you a lot of people are going to reject the truth and reject the knowledge. Like it says in Hosea 4 and 6. So, you know, it, it's not always a pretty thing. It's nice to know you're an Israelite. But again, we always deal with the sweetness and the bitterness. You know, it's sweet in your stomach. Or I'm sorry, it's sweet in your mouth, bitter in your stomach. So this truth literally... Um, <clears throat> is a uh, is a burden, you know. It becomes a burden. Uh, I was watching uh, the elder apostle Gabar, and he was talking about a verse. And it's slipping my mind. It's in Ecclesiastes. Uh, let me actually think if, if this is the spirit will work with me. I can find it really quick. Ecclesiastes twelve and two. Is this it? No, that wasn't it. But he had mentioned uh, uh, there's a verse that says, you know, it says, uh, He that gathered wisdom uh, gains much sorrow. Let me see. Yeah, and, and it's not coming to me. The, the verse is, <clears throat> is not coming to me. So if I can remember, I'll pull it up. So... What I'm going to do here is, and there's a stupid ad on the bottom making fish sounds. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, I'm going to go to, <clears throat> I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, let me see. All right. I'm going to stop it so that stops.